Oh, you've got your birthday present, all right? Oh, yes. Thanks, Mother. But, uh, what's the rush? My birthday's not till tomorrow. I know, dear, but Mother won't be here tomorrow. Not on my birthday? Where are you going? Well, I'm going to spend the weekend with the Carlisles at the seashore. You know, I haven't been a bit well. My nerves... Oh, you and your nerves. Oh, Mother, can't I come with you? My nerves could do with lapping up a little salt water and sea air, too. Certainly not, dear. It wouldn't be at all convenient. A fine thing. My own mother runs out on me on my birthday. Oh, Mother, sorry, dear. Well, don't cry on your rouge. I'll pull through. Dad and I will paint this town red, white, and blue. Oh, but your father won't be here either. For the love of Pete, where's he going? Why, he has a very important business engagement out of town. Well, I must be going, dear. Goodbye. Oh, Mother. I'll be terribly lonely. I'd love to go with you, can I, please? No. And please don't upset Mother by pouting. I never interfere with your enjoyment. So I want you to give me the same consideration as I give you. Which is exactly none. Well, how can you say such a thing? Because it happens to be the truth. Oh, listen, Mother, doesn't it ever occur to you that I'd like a little affection and attention from my parents once in a while? The same as other girls get. Well, I'm sure I'm quite affectionate. Oh, no, you're not. You don't care where I go or what I do, as long as I don't interfere with you. You never did. Barbara, you're run ragged with beauty parlors and old ladies' bridge clubs. And Dad's too busy to ever have any time left for me. Barbara, oh, I'm terribly, terribly hurt. Well, that's too bad. So am I. Well, you have the entire weekend in which to think over the cruel, cruel things you said to your mother. Goodbye. Okay. Okay. But I hope while you're bathing, a big shark comes along and, and smacks you with his tail. Oh! Hello, Eddie. This is Babe. How you short, light, and tiresome? Me? Oh, I'm lower than a lizard's belt buckle. Uh-huh. Mother and Dad are running out on me for the weekend. And me with a birthday tomorrow. How do you like that? Listen, Eddie, how about stepping out tonight? I feel like an expensive evening. Okay, babe, I think you got something there. How about the Samoa Club? Uh, Bill Evans wants to know if you can dig up a live one for him. Dig up a live one? Listen, it's only the dead ones that have to be dug up. All right, honey. I'll find something dainty but dumb. Hello, sis. Got something good for dinner? Just you wait. It'll be ready in ten minutes. Hurry up. Dad home yet? Not yet. I haven't seen you in centuries. How are you? I'm fine. Oh, gee, I'd love to. Dad wouldn't let me go to a place like that in a thousand years. No, it wouldn't do any good to ask him. He's terribly strict. Oh, wait a minute. He's just coming in. Hello, Dad. Hello. Dad, it's Barbara Webster on the phone. And she wants to know if I can go with her to the Samoa nightclub tonight. I should say not. Oh, but, Dad, now, I... Now, there's no use to discuss it. That's final. Sorry, babe. The answer is no, with a capital M. Oh, well. Of course, I'm crazy to go, but... Just keep your skirt on and your fingers crossed. I'll come by this evening and fix it up with the old gent. I'm the greatest little fixer in history. Me and Cleopatra. <laughs> On the right is the Elliot Dungeon, where a mean old man keeps his daughter safe from the cruel, bad world. Oh, well, I'll give him a couple of honks just to arouse the guards. Not that, you sap. I've got to go in and sell old man Elliot.
evening, Mr. Elliot. Come in. Good evening, Lois. Hello, Claire. Hello, Barbara. It's so nice to see you again, Mr. Elliot. I do hope you've been well. I'm all right. Gee, Claire, it must be wonderful to have your dad home at night. You don't know how lucky you are. Oh, yes, I do. Mr. Elliot, I stopped by to ask you a favor. I wish you'd let Claire come and spend the night with me. Why, I thought it was some nightclub where you were going. Oh, no, not now. You see, when I called Claire, I thought Mother and Dad were going with us. But later, I found out they were going away for the weekend. And, of course, they wouldn't dream of letting me go to a nightclub unless they were along to chaperone. And they're right. So now I'm going to be left alone. I do wish you'd let Claire come over. I've never let Claire spend the night away from home. It's all right, Dad. Let her go. Well, I guess this time. Oh, thanks, Dad. Come on up while I pack my toothbrush. No, I'll stay here and talk with your father. Oh, come on. He wants to read the face. Okay. Well, I hope I'm doing right letting her go. Of course you are, Dad. Maybe I have been too strict, but when a man is left with two motherless girls to bring up, well, he, he's on the spot, Lois. That bungled up marriage of mine has made it just that much tougher on poor Claire. <laughs> I feel awfully guilty. For crying out loud, you need a few lessons on how to handle the older generation. Well, I've never lied to Dad before. Forget it. I did the lying, not you. But I haven't a thing that's fit to wear to a place like that. We'll drop past my shanty and find something for you. We're about the same size. Oh, come on. Snap out of it. This won't bring the world to an end. <laughs> well, I've had a hard day. I think I'll go to bed. You better wait a minute and tell Claire good night. Good night, Daddy, dear. And don't worry. Good night, Lord. Good night. Now be sure and call up the first thing in the morning. Of course, Dad. Good night. Good night. Sugar Pie, you're the first blind date I ever had that made me open my eyes. You're the first blind date I ever had. <laughs> you mean it's the first date you ever had? Oh! <laughs> hey, they're the Coleman sisters. Bill, let's go over and pay our disrespects to them, huh? You're crazy, Eddie. There's only one of them. Huh? Yeah, I must be seeing double again. <laughs> oh, not that. <laughs> well, come on, let's say hello anyhow. You girls excuse us for a minute, huh? With pleasure, Mr. Hayes. Be back in two minutes. Bye. Couple of hot little numbers, Bo. So you've noticed. We can use those babies. That's just what I was thinking. We'll do something about it. Okay. Give me one of your cards. Pardon me, girls. I, I don't mean to intrude, but I was admiring your gown. Do you mind telling me where you got them? Mine came from Paris. Oh. And uh, so did hers. Oh, they're lovely. You see, I'm uh, interested in a business way. I happen to be a partner in Gilman's of New York. Gilman's? Mm -hmm. Oh, the smart gown shop. Yes, sir. That's Mr. Gilman sitting over there. Wouldn't you girls like to meet him? You bet. Well, come along. This is Mr. Gilman, Miss... Uh, she's Claire Elliott. My name's Babe, um, Barbara Webster. I'm very happy to meet you, young ladies. Miss Russell and I were passing through your lovely little city on our way home. Just stopped in for a bite to eat. That's sure giving the old burg a break. It's unusual finding young ladies of your appearance and taste in a town as small as it. Thanks with tassels on it, Mr. Gilman. You see, Miss Russell and I are constantly on the lookout for the type of girls we can use. Like all fashionable gown shops, we have difficulty in getting models. You mean those wax dummies that stand in the windows? <laughs> no, I mean good-looking girls who can wear clothes properly. We train them ourselves. Nice work if you can get it. If you young ladies are interested, I'd be happy to have you join our organization. An 
And I might add that at Gilman's, the remuneration is the highest. <clears throat> We'd better be leaving, Mr. Gilman. We have quite a long ride ahead of us. Of course, Miss Russell. Well, goodbye, ladies. And don't forget, there are good positions waiting for you any time you come in to see me. Just send in that card. Good night, and thanks, Mr. Gilman. Good night, Miss Russell. Good night. What a break. Imagine Gilman. I never heard of it. Neither did I. Hey, I've just had an inspiration. I mean, Bill helps have it. This is going to be good, I bet you. No, so there's a red-hot party going on down at Crestdale. Some friends of mine. Let's crash it, huh, and make it a big night. We're on. When do we start? Right away. Well, as soon as we have a couple more drinks. Oh, no, I can't do that. Can't do what? Have a couple more drinks? No, I mean go with you. Oh, come on. You can't spoil a good inspiration like that. She'll come. Swell. Let's get going. Where do you think you're going? Do you want to make something out of it? Yeah, come on. Hey. Oh, so you want to play tag, huh? Oh, like right your wrist. Hey, how would you like a punch in the nose, Dave? Eh? From you, I wouldn't know I had one. Oh, hey, you want to play, huh? Oh, huh? I must be getting weak. over to Samoa nightclub right away. Yes, there's a terrible riot going on. What? Keep it going, you'll be right over. That guy's crazy. Come on, get Guys, in there. Move on, Stumble. Hey, who are you shoving? Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I didn't mean to do that. Get him. Let's go. Claire, stay here. I'm not through with you. If you were a boy, I'd tax you within an inch of your life. If I were a boy, you probably wouldn't have known anything about it. Boys get away with anything. I can't believe it even now. A daughter of mine in the police court. Drunk and disorderly. I wasn't drunk, and I wasn't disorderly. That makes no difference. The effect is exactly the same. I don't see how, when my case was dismissed. Claire? When your mother died, it nearly killed me. I wonder how I've lived these years without her. But now I'm thankful she's gone. This disgrace would be more than she could bear. I doubt it. She probably would have understood. Better than you do, Father. I don't know how I'm ever going to face my friends again. Oh, for heaven's sake, Father, it isn't as bad as all that. After the mess you've made of your life, you have no right to talk. Did it ever occur to you, Father, that you played a pretty big part in helping me make that mess? By your severity and your inability to understand a young girl's problems? What do you mean? I mean that too much restraint is just as bad as too little. You know, Dad, human beings can stand just so much restriction. Then they rebel, they go wild, they explode. Do you mean to say that you're defending your sister in her wrongdoing? No. I'm trying to make you see that you had too much to do with it. Oh, absolute nonsense. I've merely done my duty as a father. I've tried to keep my word to your mother. You had better go to bed after your wild night. But I want you to understand, this does not end the matter. Hereafter, you are not to go anywhere at night without either your sister or me. Father, you don't mean that. I do. Dad, you listen to me. Ever since I can remember, you've talked about how much you love me. But I say that no father who loves his daughter could deny her every pleasure and every freedom as you've done me. Why, this isn't a home. It's a jail. The trouble with you is you've let the world pass you. Times have changed, but you haven't. You're nothing but an old, unreasonable fogey who doesn't know what it's all about. Go to your room. <laughs> oh, that awful court. And those, those dreadful people. I shudder just to think of it. I thought it was fun. 
And that judge was a peach. There's a guy who knows what it's all about. I'll never be able to live down this humiliation or hold my head up among the ladies of my bridge clubs again. Never. Hooey, those old battle axes will be green-eyed with jealousy. You'll be the lioness of the hour. The mother of a beautiful daughter who got slightly smeared and landed in the hoose gal. How can you be so callous when you know the condition of my health and nerves? Just look how it's upset me. You've got a good act, Mother. You ought to be in the movie. Oh, dear. You're putting gray in my head. Well, your favorite beauty parlor can soon fix that up. They've been doing it for years. After all, Barbara, was it necessary to send for me? Don't you realize it might have brought on a nervous breakdown? When a gal lands in the cooler, it's only natural she wants a mother. Oh, yes. Yes, I suppose so. Oh, dear, I was having such a wonderful run of luck at Bridge. When, when the message came, why, I won over $100. So that's it. That's the reason you were so upset. I might have known. Oh, that must be your father. It's about time. You answer it. I feel a little faint. Okay, I'll tell him off. Hello. Oh, hello, Father. What's it all about? Well, you certainly took your sweet time trying to find out. Well, when I left a message for you that I was in a jam, weren't you even slightly interested? Busy, huh? Well, fancy that. I merely landed in the jug. The jug, the cooler, the clink. So you think it'll do me good to stay in jail a few days? Teach me a lesson. Fine talk. Well, I'm not in jail now. I'm home, no thanks to you. Goodbye. Uh, I'm going to my room and have a good cry. Have one for me, too. Oh. Babe, I'm awfully sorry about getting you into that jam. Are you folks home? No, I'm all alone as usual. That's swell. I'm coming over. I want to talk to you about something. Come ahead. I'm ready to talk about anything. Bye. Claire, this is no time to be working a crossword puzzle. It's just a note for Lois. You're not telling her where we're going to work, are you? I just said not to worry and that I was going away to take a job and I'd write later. I didn't even leave a message. Let them worry. It might do them good for a change. But they'll be having the police hunting for us. No, by the time they miss me, I'll be working and they won't even bother. Gee, if I had a little money, forget it. I've got enough. My mother's a good bridge player. Nothing to say. But, Senator, I've got to have a statement from you about to... I have nothing to say. Oh, now, look, you can't treat your constituents like that. They're entitled to I know your... I told you I have on. nothing to say. Don't look now, but there's something in my suitcase I didn't pack. Leave it to me to fall for the good-looking girls. If you don't mind, I'll take that. Oh, so it's a that. I thought maybe it was a those. Why don't you look where you're going, fresh guy? I'm not a fresh guy. I'm a newspaper reporter. A reporter, huh? The crack goes double. Well, babe, if he's a newspaper man, maybe he knows where there's a good boarding house. Lady, I've lived in this here village for nigh on to a hundred years, and there ain't no such thing as a good boarding house. How about one that'll do until we buy our own hotel? I know just the spot. 
right in the middle of Central Park Lake, with an easy rowing distance of the Bronx Zoo and the Battery. Come on. But you said it was in Central Park Lake. It is, but the water went down. Oh, hello, Jimmy. Same to you, Ma, and many of them. Oh, I brought you a couple of new clients. This is Miss Barbara Webster and Miss Claire Elliott. Girls, meet the one and only Ma DeLacy, your new landlady. How do you do? And I'll see you later to collect my split. Mm, try and get it. <laughs> I'll give you a ring later to see that you're being treated all right. So long. So long. Goodbye, Mr. Adams. Right this way. Say, he's nice, isn't he? Yes, for a reporter. I've known him since he was born. His dad was press agent for my show when we played the mistakes. My, were you an actress, Mrs. DeLacy? I was a star. I'll bet you were in burlesque. In burlesque, my dear, I was burlesque. Put your bags down here for now. And come on in and meet the girls. What's happened? Girls, we've got some new customers. Miss Barbara Webster and Miss Claire Elliott. Make yourselves acquainted while I do an off to Buffalo to the kitchen. <laughs> Hiya, kids. Welcome to our menagerie. The word is menage, my dear, not menagerie. Oh, of course. This is the professor. <laughs> How do you do? And this is Floppy. Snooty. Dreamy. Dizzy. <laughs> and uh, Slap. Hello. I'm wacky. <laughs> Let's see, we'll call you, um... I don't care what you call her, but I'm Babe and it sticks. Oh, tough guy, you. Well, I guess I'll take off the lid and try to feel at home. Now, here's the kind of a hat I've been looking for. I'll wear it tonight. But I see I'll have to change the trimming all around before I'd be seen in it. I'll change your nose around if you lay a finger on this hat. Oh, pardon me. I'd hope the new borders would be congenial. Yeah, what do you mean, congenial? Why, somebody who would mix well with us, of course. I'll mix with you any time I catch you with my hat. <laughs> hey, girls, I forgot to show you your room. Come on. Hey, hey what do we eat? eat? Do we eat? Do we I should worry I'm not eating. Come and get it! Oh, I thought you weren't going to eat. This time don't count. story, eh? No job. No. I've had about enough of this. You're gonna get out of here. That's no job, Jack. Don't go with me no more. Something tells me it's a good thing we've got a job to go to. But what if we haven't got one? Oh, girls, uh, will you go right to the living room? I'll be with you in just a minute. Now, look here, Mary. You're going back to that little half-baked burg of a town that you call home, and you're gonna stay there. How can I, when I owe you so much board? Oh, skip it. That'll never break me. <laughs> Mary, I've had a kick in the kimono for every light on Broadway. I know life. I've seen girls like you, oh, hundreds of them, come here all hopped up with enthusiasm, and I've seen them take a fall when they hit the main stem. Some of them bounce right back again on their feet. Others don't. You're the type that don't. Baby, I think I'm going home. You little softy, you're gonna let that sob stuff get under your skin. Listen, we're gonna pick those lights off Broadway and wear them around our necks for beads. Claire? Oh, I hadn't counted on anything like this. Oh, hadn't you? Dad, what are you going to do? Well, I hate to do it. 
But I've got to call the police. Dad, you'll do nothing of the sort. Claire only did what any girl with spirit would do. No. I'm not going to let you humiliate her by calling the police, where they'd be hounding her down as though she were a bank bandit. But we've got to find her. She's run away, and we don't know where. She has not run away. She's simply gone away, as I would have done myself under the circumstances. Besides, she says she has a job she'll write later. No, do you mean to tell me you think she's done right, leaving us like this? No. No, I don't think that. But she's done it. And you're going to let the kid alone and give her a chance. Mm, as a father, I guess I failed. the paper, the stock market took a nice jump. You must have cleaned up. Yes, I did all right. Of course, a few thousand one way or the other doesn't mean a thing to a man like you. Well, it's a gamble. Win today, lose tomorrow. My secretary said you wanted me to drop by. Yes. I thought maybe you'd like to settle your bill. It's grown rather large in the last few days. I don't remember my wife having bought anything from you recently. It wasn't your wife. How much is it? $5,000. $5,000? That's absurd. Nevertheless, that's the amount of your bill. I think you'll pay it. I will not. I'm sure you'll have cause for regret. Now I get this whole setup. This shop is just a blind. A front for your shakedown rack. You find sacks of money, then you go after them. But for once, you've got the wrong pig by the ear, Gilman. I won't submit to a thing like this. Think what the result would be if your wife should see that bill. The divorce settlement and the alimony would be many times 5,000, Mrs. Stanley. All right. You've got me. We all have to pay for being chumps, I guess. And now the check, please, Mrs. Stanley. On account. You mean in full? That remains to be seen. Give me back that check. Sorry, Mr. Stanley. I won't go through with this. I'll go to the police. It would be most unwise, Mr. Stanley. And perhaps dangerous. You mangy rat. You. Ah. I'm a hand like you. Now I understand how you get away with this. Well. You and Gut see that Mr. Stanley gets to his car. Safely. Uh, good morning, Miss Russell. Remember us? I'm afraid I don't. Well, we're the girls you met at the Samara Club in Glen Haven. Oh, yes, so you are. Didn't think you'd see us so soon, did you? I hadn't given it any thought at all. We came after that job Mr. Gilman promised us. Yes, may we see him? I suppose so. Come along. Life's full of hard knocks, Flo. So I see. Oh, came through like a little man, huh? Yeah. You think you'll cause us any trouble? Not a chance. He's the type that puts up and shuts up. Oh, uh, there are a couple of your little friends waiting to see you. Who? Oh, those kids you fell for at the Samoa nightclub in Glen Haven. Don't keep them waiting. Send them in. I'll bring them in. All right, girls. Mr. Gilman will see you now. Well, well, girl. How are you? I'm so happy to see you. Thank you. We came for that job you mentioned, Mr. Gilman. Well, you didn't waste any time. I'll have to see what I can do. Suppose both of you girls come back tomorrow. 
after I've had a talk with Miss Russell. Oh, thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Gilman. Goodbye. Well, babe, our big career is about to start. Aren't you thrilled? Yeah, I'm all feverish. Isn't Mr. Gilman marvelous? Tolerably marvelous. I noticed you tried to make him think he was pretty swell. Yeah, what did I say? You didn't have to say anything. Those looks you gave him. There's nothing like making friends if you want to get along in this man's world. Mm -hmm. You didn't turn on much charm from Miss Russell. That be shy, Dame. <laughs> I should worry about her. You know, it seemed to me she acted kind of jealous of you. That's swell. Maybe I'll give her something to be jealous about. Why, babe, that's a funny thing to say. You don't mean it. Don't I? Listen, no drugstore blonde's going to give me the ice bag like she did. But you've got to be nice to her. She's his partner. Yeah, well, maybe he's in the market for a new partner. Gee, you sort of scare me when you talk like that. All right, then have a good scare. Boom! Oh, <laughs> come on, part of your schnoz and let's go down to dinner. Sadie? Let's sing him the one about the boarding house. This is one I panicked him with at the palace. I keep an actor's boarding house quite near to Hard Times Square. I used to be in Burnett, but there ain't no future there. So I settled down and opened up a classy boarding place where the guests is all refined, but still the beer cans may be changed. I try to make them happy, from chorus girl to star. All I do is sit and listen while they tell how good they are. And we have meatloaf Mondays, you on Tuesday, Wednesday, leg a lamb. The lamb takes an encore as a hash on Thursday, Friday, fish and the ham. On Saturday, the place smells just like home when the corned beef and cabbage is dressed. I can't give them luxuries for seven pounds a week, but heaven knows I do my best. Hi. Dear, you look like you just stepped out of the beauty section of the Sunday edition. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. I assume that's a compliment. None greater. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. But Babe and I were detained at the shop. Some customers that couldn't make up their minds. Nah, why worry? We've got all evening. This is my night off. And you're spending it with me? Gee, I'm flattered. What do you want to do? Go for a drive, or a movie, opera, cabaret, or flea circus? Oh, let's just sit down and talk. Martha Lacey said we could have the parlor. Well, I was always a girl who could take a hint, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Well, I never could raise much excitement about parlor conversation, but if that's the way you want it... Sit down, Jimmy. Here you are, baby. Sweet for the sweetheart. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. You're sweet, too. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Well, what do we talk about? Books, art? Scandal, love, that's it, love. We'll have a debate, to love or not to love, and I'll take the affirmative. And I'll take another chocolate. Oh, oh excuse me. Oh. Curiosity killed the cat, they say. Yes, but it keeps a woman alive. Gee, he's good looking, isn't he? Gary, to me, any man's good looking. Something tells me we're not alone. Something tells me you're right. Oh, pardon me. Come on, let's get out of here and hunt up a nice traffic jam where it isn't so crowded. buy 
Larkin is a free cocktail. Yes, and me with a date. Jimmy Adams, the new town? Of course. Please come into my office, Miss Webster. All right, if these women ever think it's time to go home. <laughs> well, that's all right, Miss Russell. We'll take care of them. Down, won't you? Thank you. You look tired. Maybe this will freshen you up a bit. I thought these were only for the customers. These are for friends only. Very dear friends. I've been wanting to have this little chat with you for some time, Miss Webster. Barbara's my friend. Unless you like Dave better. I think I do. Dave. Now we're getting somewhere. I've studied you closely since you came here. I've come to the conclusion that you're the girl I need. What for? Helping me out on something. And put some rather easy money in your hands. Go on, I'll listen. You see, babe. Number the girl on the left is wearing. Don't you, Jerry? No, looks all right to me. <laughs> you don't seem very enthusiastic. After all, not every bridegroom to be is allowed to help the bride select her trousseau. I wouldn't know, sweet. I've never been a bridegroom to be before. <laughs> no, darling. Aren't you ever serious? Sure. Just before the kickoff in a big game. All right, Mr. Gilman. I'll take that number also. I want you to send everything to my home as quickly as possible. We're sailing a week from tonight, and I don't want anything delayed. Certainly, Miss Lark. Thank you. Shall we go, Jerry? Anytime you're ready, dear. Will you excuse me a moment, please? Certainly. Thank you. Mm. Go to my office. I'll stare him right in. Okay, Jerry. A week from tonight, darling. I can't realize the time is drawing so close. This wasn't so darn public. I'd give you a kiss. <clears throat> Are you including Paris in your honeymoon? Certainly. <laughs> then I'm sure I can make your trip more interesting. I doubt it. But what's your idea? Well, if you could spare Mr. Gerard for just a moment, I'd like for him to come into my office. I want to give him the name of some friends. It'll help you really see Paris. I'll wait here. Thank you. What I really wanted was to give you a nip of something a friend of mine sent from the other side. Paradise in a bottle, if you know what I mean. Leave me to it. I'm out in training. <laughs> Go on in. I'll be with you in a moment. Thank you. What oh. happened? Why, why, I just came in to ask Mr. Gilman a question, and I, I guess I sort of fainted. Sort of. You seem to have made a pretty good job of it. Feel all right now? Yes, thank you. What's wrong? The kid has fainted. Maybe I ought to better phone a doctor. No, no, I'll be all right, Mr. Gilman. Well, if there's nothing more I can do, I'll be getting along. Miss Loring will be waiting. I'll get in touch with you later and give you those names. <laughs> Terrific. I knew that the first time I cast eyes on you. Are you going to take me out tonight? In a big way. I'll meet you down at the car in five minutes. All right. What are you doing in here? I asked you what you were doing here. All right, what about it? Are you going to answer me or not? Sure, the answer is it's none of your business. Anything that concerns Joe Gilman is my business, and don't forget it. Don't make me laugh, Blondie. You haven't got a mortgage on Joe. Now get this, you fresh little upstart. 
I know all that goes on here. And from what I see of you, there's a lot of it I don't like. That's too bad. What am I supposed to do about it? Keep your hands off Joe Gilman. And I think you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm dying left. Listen, sister, if you die, it won't be laughing. Hey, keep cracks like that to yourself. Then don't make them necessary. Are you threatening me? No. I'm warning you. Jay? Oh, not bad. How is she? Oh, she's fine, Dad, as usual. Working hard and perfectly happy. I'd feel so much better if I could just see for myself where she works and the kind of people she's around. I think she's really fallen in love with that Jimmy Adams. In love? Mm -hmm. Why, she's just a kid. Oh, no, Dad, she's not just a kid. You'll have to remember that. She never mentioned me in her letters. Oh, forget it, Dad. She's probably busy. Come on, get your coat on and I'll take you to dinner. All right. Ten thousand dollars? Huh, that's a laugh. Looks like nowadays the rats are setting the traps. Say, ten thousand dollars is very cheap for that negative. Suppose I don't pay it. Listen, if that rich doll you're gonna marry gets a peek at that picture, your marriage is gonna go go fluey, and you're gonna lose a barrel of sugar, right? Well, this is the first time I ever played in a game where the other side made all the rules. Sure. And this is one line that you're not going to bust through for a touchdown, see? I haven't got 10,000 cents, let alone $10,000. Yeah, we know. But you can get it. Here. Put your moniker on this here note, see? And we'll give you 30 days after you're married to make it good. Now, that's fair enough, ain't it? That's mighty white of you, pal. And one crack out of you to anybody about this. That gal of yours was back in the circulation. Get me? I hope to. Someday. We don't want no trouble with you, Palsy. Come on and get busy and sign this note, will you? There it is. Thanks, pal. Gee, you sign a nice fist. I wish I was as good as that. <laughs> Here. This is for you. And this is for you. brought, or was it the stork? Well, so he came across like a little soldier. And that's exactly what you're going to do. Meaning what? A 50-50 split on the money when you collect from that note, and on everything else we do this way from now on. Now, wait a minute, babe. I didn't promise you a 50-50 cut-in. No, that's why I'm telling you I'm going to get it. I'm paying you a salary. That's the way it stays. If you think I'm helping you with this kind of stuff on 35 bucks a week, you're crazy. <laughs> All right, you win. I was only fooling. You better not be fooling about my share. I'm calling you up this evening. I have a surprise for you. Jimmy, as my fraternity brother, you've got to help me out. I can't go to the cops. There's nothing I can do. You'll just have to take your medicine and forget it. Oh, I'd like to get a hold of those mugs. Yeah, I know, but you can't. You're fighting something dirty and hidden. It isn't like football, Jerry. But couldn't you get your paper to back it? Write some stories or something? Sure. The cows come home. But it wouldn't do any good unless you could give names. You couldn't do that, could you? Not me. And neither could you. Why, they'd plug us in the back before we even got started. Well, I guess I'll be getting along. If you get any bright ideas, let me know. Sorry, Jerry, but that's the way it is. Try not to worry too much. You've still got more than 30 days. A lot can happen in that time. 
So long, Jimmy. So long, kid. See you at the wedding. Hello, babe. Dinner's over. I've been in conference. I'm going to be a big shot. Then you better tell Ma to Lacey. She says the next time you're late for supper, there won't be any. That's all right. We're getting out of this chicken coop, and I mean quick. Get out? When Ma's been so grand to us? I've outgrown this place, and so have you. We're on our way to higher things, such as a penthouse. What on earth are you babbling about? Kid, I'm in the money. I found my gold mine in the sky. My ship's come in. I've struck oil. All that in one day? Come on, what's it all about? I can't go into details on an empty stomach. I'll tell you soon enough. Maybe. Where are we going to eat, Joe? I don't remember having any date with you tonight. Never mind that. I came to talk with you, Joe. What's the matter with your telephone? Bill's paid, isn't it? It's about the Webster kid. We went round and round this afternoon. About you. Now, look here, Flo. You know, the setup with Babe, as far as I'm concerned. The trouble is, you don't. Stop being mysterious, will you? She's talking too much. She told me this afternoon she was going to bust your racket wide open. You're lying, Flo. After she goes to the district attorney, it'll be too late to find out I'm right. Babe doesn't mean anything to me, the way you imagine. I only used her for a purpose. You're the only one in my life. I don't have to tell you that. No, but I like you too. Babe's through, washed up. What do you mean, washed up? What do I usually mean when I say washed up? I don't believe you. Well, the Webster girl's checking out tonight. Yeah? Permanently? Yep. Going out tonight? One never knows. You gotta be prepared. I thought you had a date with Jimmy. No, he phoned he had to work tonight. Miss Webster, Obama. Yes, telephone. I'll be right there. You see, I must be psychic or something. Hello? Oh, hello, Joe. No, I haven't eaten yet. Well, be by in half an hour? Okay. Hey, hey, what's the surprise? Well, if I have to wait, I have to wait. Bye. Stopping here for? There's no view this time of night. We're strong. I think we're out of gas. So you buy me a car, put it in my name, and forget gas. A fine thing. You'll have to guess again, Joe. The gauge says there's plenty. I'll see what's wrong. One thing, we're getting a flat. Did they charge you extra for that? Release the brakes. Babe, it's Jimmy. Jimmy Adams. How did it happen? Babe, you've got to tell me. Tell Claire. 
Yes, tell Claire. Tell Claire to go home. Yes, I know. But how did this happen? Lieutenant McGrew speaking. Oh, hello, Jimmy. This is Mac. Looks like you had the right hunch on that Babe Webster case. That accident didn't just happen. I think somebody figured it all out. Nice going, Mac. What have you got? Can't spell it over the telephone, and I may be wrong. But come on in. I'll give you a big earful. Thanks, pal. I'll be right over. You sent for me, Mr. Gilman? Oh, yes, Claire. Won't you sit down, please? I've been noticing how tired you look recently, my dear. Are you ill? No, just heart sick. About the Barbara. I just can't get used to her being gone. I understand. But you must try to snap out of it for your own good. Yes, I know. I'm raising your salary. And there's something else I want to discuss with you. It's very important to your future with us. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gilman. You've been wonderful. You were so lovely when Barbara... We won't discuss that, my dear. Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Make you feel so much better. And we can discuss that matter I have in mind. Oh, yes, I'd love to, but... Well, I have a date. Well, can't you break it? Well, yes, I suppose so. Then let's do. Shall I get your number for you? Oh, sir, no, thank you. I'll get it. Hello. Nice evening, isn't it? What gives you the right to barge into a man's office like this? The power of the press. I'm Jimmy Adams of the Globe. Oh, Jimmy, I was just trying to call you. That's swell, honey. What for? Well, Jimmy, I'm sorry, but I'm going to be busy tonight. Oh, with him? She's having dinner with me. Oh, no, she's not. Will you oblige me by getting out of my office? I can't think of a thing I'd do to oblige you. Then I'll have to throw you on. Jimmy! Come on. Oh. Get out here. Get out. Come on, here. Cut that. Take him out. Don't be afraid to get rough. Seems to like. Oh, so it's one of those things. Oh, Jimmy, you ought to apologize. Yeah, for not knocking him cold, and I could still do it. Take him out. Oh, Jimmy, will you please go? Certainly, if that's the way you want it. Terribly sorry this happened, Claire. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Mr. Gilman. Thank you, my dear. Now, this one I'm sure the young lady will like. Now, this is exactly the type of place you should have. It'll give you importance and add to the prestige of Gilman. Oh, it's lovely, but I couldn't possibly afford anything like this. But it's good business. Here, in your position as contact woman for the shop, you could entertain prospective customers and interview buyers. Well, I realize that, Mr. Gilman, but I... I think I've been sufficiently generous in the matter of your new salary. <laughs> Just a minute now, speak to the agent. $40 a month ahead. Well, Gilman, I can't do that. I can't do that. Oh, I understand. Well, settle. It's a bargain, only $40 a month. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I didn't dream an apartment like this could be rented for $40. <laughs> you take tomorrow off and move. Oh, Mr. Gilman, I think you're one of the nicest persons I've ever met. I'm so grateful. Well, I'll try so hard to make good on my new job. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. I'm sure you will. Shall we go? All right. I can't tell you how badly I feel about leaving. You've been so sweet and wonderful to me and... Barbara. Oh, I suppose this joint would sort of get you, for the memories of her and everything. Well, it's only partly that. 
You see, with my new position and my lovely new apartment. Apartment? You are going high toned. <laughs> well, you see, Mr. Gilman insisted that I live in a place where I might meet customers and buy it. It's business. And imagine, he got it for me for only $40 a month. Oh. Well, what's the matter? Dearie, I hope you know what you're doing. But this sounds like an awful phony setup to me. Mind you, I may be wrong. Oh, of course you are. There ought to be a law against doorbells. Hello, Jimmy. How's the old news now? Hello, Ma. Is Claire here? Yes, but she won't be much longer. I'll call her for you. Claire! Someone to see you! What do you mean, Claire won't be here much longer? She's moving. Moving? Where? And she'll have to tell you that. Oh, so it's you. Jimmy, I don't want to see you now or any other time. Oh, don't be like that. I came to apologize. I'm sorry I crashed in and blew up like that. I meant what I said. Will you leave? Say, where are you going? That's none of your affair. Has it got anything to do with that heel Gilman? Don't you dare talk about him like that. He's a gentleman, and that's more than I can say for you. Well, if he's a gentleman, I prefer to stay a newspaper man. Keep your hands off me. Look here, you're going to tell me what this moving business is all about. What goes on here, anyhow, Mom? I don't just know. She told me that that bird Gilman that she's working for is running an apartment. Well, I'll tear that monkey into sandwich spread, and I've got reasons. Oh, Jimmy, we've got to do something. Well, I could do plenty, but... Well, right now, I've got to lay low. Well, if I was a young fellow and in love with a girl, I know what I'd do. Yeah, I know, Ma. But there's a law against kidnapping, I've heard. I suppose so. Do you think her folks could do anything about it? I don't know. She never would tell me anything about them. I don't even know where they live. Oh, I can fix that. Come on. She was so excited when she got home, she didn't pick that up. I'll be seeing you. Okay, thanks, operator. Hello, Mr. Elliot. Well, you don't know me, but I'm the fellow who's in love with your daughter. Oh, then I guess you're Mr. Adams. Uh, Jimmy Adams? Yeah, that's right. Well, there's something I've got to discuss with you. It's about Claire. Why, of course, Jimmy. Uh, I'll talk it over with her sister, and, and I'll get in touch with you later. Joe, I want you to get rid of that Elliot girl. I don't like her. You don't trust her, is that it? I don't trust you. Listen, don't go jealous on me again. Then don't try to put anything over on me. Stop harping about it, will you? No more than get one cutie out of the way, then you bob up with another. Wait a minute. You got who out of the way? Oh, skip it. I, I was just shooting off my mouth. Maybe for once you shot it off too far. Hiya, boss. Hiya, Flo. Hello. You get a load of this in the Wally Winfield column. What is it? <laughs> the Clint Houstons of the Wild and Woolly West are in town, perusing our skyscrapers and buying oodles of nice pretties for Mrs. Houston. Clint makes his millions raising and selling longhorn moo-moos for all you beefsteak lovers. And I do mean moves. <laughs> Sounds as if the Houstons might be interested in a shop called Gilman. That's what I thought. Check on the hotel, Val. See if you can locate them. Right. Oh, Cliff, they're all so nice. I don't know which ones to take. Why, honey, you can have anything your little heart desires. I'm buying the whole caboodle, Mr. Gilman. Wrap them up and send them over to the hotel. Thank you. I'm sure Ms. Houston will like them all. Yep, she's plum loco about duds. <laughs> How do you like New York, Mr. Houston? Well, sure is plentiful. And I've never seen so many pretty little heifers in all my born days. Now, if Rita here wasn't along, I'd rope me a herd and take her back to Texas. Just to look at it. Don't, Clint. That's nothing to joke about. See that, Mr. Gilbert? A jealous wife can kick up more fuss than a band of cattle rustlers. <laughs> you find New York rather expensive, don't you? Yes, but I get a kick out of blowing my roll. Spend it while you got it. You can't take it with you. That's what I say. That's right. Rita, you about ready to get back to the hotel? 
Well, not yet, Clint. I'm not half through looking. Okay, honey. You're the boss of the Houston Ranch. I told the hotel if we was late, not to wait supper for us. <laughs> I have some other things to show you, Mrs. Houston, if you have time. Well, of course I have. How about a little drink in my office while the ladies are busy? Now you're talking my language. Honey, you don't mind if we take time for a little snort, do you? No, but please, Clint, not too many. <laughs> You'll excuse us, please. Come with me, Mrs. Houston. Oh, my handbag. I'll get it. <laughs> it's a present from my husband. He insists that I carry it. Oh, I see. I thought maybe it was to keep the other ladies away from that handsome husband of yours. <laughs> that is hardly a joking matter with me. I, uh, I apologize, Mrs. Houston. Oh, that's all right. After all, it's no secret about Clint and his lady friends. There's one in particular, right here in New York, and I'm going to find her. You, uh, you wouldn't do anything rash, would you, Mrs. Houston? I'd kill her, and him too, as much as I love him. Well, let's hope you're wrong about the other woman. Come with me, dear. How about another? No thanks, partner. There's one thing I always say. There's a limit to everything but my money. <laughs> <laughs> you're a pretty generous husband, Mr. Houston. The clothes are costing you plenty. Oh, I don't mind. Sort of a peace offering. Peace offering? Yeah, you see, my wife, she's got on her high horse because I did a little stepping out last night. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing serious, I hope. Oh, no. Just a little poker at some of the hombres or at the hotel. Say, they took me for plenty. Probably professional card sharps. They're always hanging around. Well, I don't mind being trimmed. But it sort of puts an off brand on my pride. <laughs> <laughs> you like poker? <laughs> Do I like poker? Say, does a horse like oats? That's one habit I can't cure myself of. Picked it up years ago when I was cow down the panhandle. <laughs> <laughs> I like a bit of poker myself. In fact, a few friends of mine are having a little session tonight. Say, maybe you can squeeze up and make room for me. Mm, I'm afraid our session wouldn't interest you, Mr. Houston. We make it pretty light. Oh, heck. I like to sit in just for the fun of it. <laughs> All right. Be glad to have you drop in. Wadsworth apartment, 16th floor. Name's Elliot. 16th floor? Say, I thought you said you boys didn't play a high game. <laughs> <laughs> we start off at 8.30, right on the nose. Up to quit early, ready for business in the morning, you know. Well, partner, I'll sure be there. Say, I guess the little lady's about ready. <laughs> then I'll see you tonight? I hope so. Mrs. Houston is waiting for you. Oh, thank you, ma'am. And I'll see you again. Of course. So long. Give me a cigarette. Well, fix for tonight. Your cutie's apartment, huh? Where else? Does she have any idea what it's all about? Of course not. That's what'll make it good. Didn't think we'd be using the place this quick, did you? Did you? Hello, Mrs. Houston. This is a, a friend of yours. For certain reasons, I can't tell you who I am, but uh, I have some very interesting information for you. My husband left here a few moments ago. I'm uh, sure he didn't tell you he was spending the evening with a young lady at her apartment. Thank you. I'll handle the situation. young lady. I'm looking for a number named Gilman. Oh, he isn't here. Well, he will be. I'll just come in and wait. Say, you're the little gal that trots up and down at Gilman showing off duds, ain't you? Why, yes. Uh, did you say Mr. Gilman was going to meet you here? Yes, ma'am. We're having a little poker entertainment. Me and him and some more fellas. Oh, I didn't know that. But if Mr. Gilman said he'd be here, I'm sure he will. Well, he better be, because I feel that my little rabbit's foot and my horseshoe's pulling together strong tonight. <laughs> well, uh, hadn't you better sit down? Oh, well, thank you, ma'am. I don't care if I do. 
Oh. Uh, don't mind me. I was just admiring it. Why didn't you show something like that to my wife? I'm just crazy about that soft, fluffy stuff. A very pretty picture. And fortunately, I got it. What kind of a yearling colt's trick is this? You know, all right, sucker. Well, what do you want a picture of me for? Your wife might like it. You remember your trip to New York. Now listen, partner. If my wife saw that picture, she'd get a divorce. And I reckon that'd just about kill me. And the idea is you buy the camera with what's in it. How much? $10,000. Well, you sneaking coyote, I'll break you in two. Take it easy. Okay, partner. The jackpot's yours. <laughs> the boys down home will certainly roar when they hear how Clint Houston got himself all hogtied by a big city slicker. Where I come from, they don't use pretty girls to bait their dirty traps. Oh, Mr. Houston, I don't know anything about this. Please don't think I do. Shut up. All right, snap out of it and get that check out of your system. Well, of course you know, don't you? But a check written at the point of a shooting iron ain't legal. Well, let the bank worry about that cowpuncher. Miss Kelly! Keep these monkeys covered while I slip the cuffs on them. Get that gun out of his side pocket. All right, Gilman. This is what bad boys get for playing naughty games. So, a couple of slimy dicks. That's no way to speak to a lady. And don't you be surprised if the boys down at the homicide squad start asking you embarrassing questions. Questions about what? About an automobile accident to Babe Webster. The boys say it was murder. All right, let's get them out of here. Say, Kelly, we're forgetting our witnesses. That's right. Come on in, witnesses. It's about time. That fire escape is getting hard. Jimmy! Dad! What is this? Old home week? You dirty little stool pigeon. You did this. Well, this will shut you up. Go ahead. Take these birds down and lock them up. Well, folks, I have to congratulate you. You figured that out just right. Yeah, but it took you to put it over, Charlie. See you later. Oh, Dad, you grand old darling. And I thought you didn't love me. Well, dear, I guess we both were a little wrong. Dad, everything's going to be changed. And I'm going to be so different. I'll say you're going to be different. Even your name. From now on, you're going to be Mrs. Jimmy Adams and no back talk. <laughs> <laughs> 